going to talk about measuring performance. So before I get started, I always like to define exactly so we're all on the same page. Uh, according to the U.S. Department of Energy, their policy guidelines, performance measurement involves determining what to measure, identifying the data collection methods, and the collection of data. This definition focuses on the need to take the time to define what you're measuring as well as how you will collect it. But then you think, why would organizations want us to perform uh, project or measure project performance? And there's lots of reasons. Uh, if we were in a group, I would love to have you call some of them out. Um, but basically, the reasons that are most identified is to see where there might be areas of performance that you need to improve, or if you want to benchmark your organization against industry st standards or some performance. Uh, one that I use it for quite often is to evaluate the effectiveness of a change that you're putting in or even to determine the value or the impact of project management within your organization. An, an example of this might be, for, for instance, if 80% if of your projects are coming in late and you um, consider putting in a rigid project management process to see if that might improve things. Well, you, you would um, want to measure the performance after the change, which is the in implementing a new process, and then see if there is some performance. Uh, improvement. And the re one of the reasons this is, has become really important is because of benefits realization. I don't know if all of you are aware of it, but this is uh, a whole new process that's becoming very important in organizations. The business analysts like Gartner and Forrester, they're advising organizations to start ensuring that the benefits or the objectives uh, that were found in the business case or, you know, the uh, uh, you know, the goals that they had stated that actually sold the project in the beginning, the benefits realization is a process to make sure that they are met. So I'm sure many of you, because I know I have, in your experience, you write up this beautiful business case, say what you propose this project to be able to do, but then no one measures after the project is completed. And that's going to be changing because be, uh, businesses are learning that they're losing a lot of money, that there's no follow through in some of the anticipated benefits that they think they might have. And performance measurement is key to benefits realization. You can't do benefits realization if you don't know performance measurement. So this is an important aspect and one you might be finding yourself involved in in the future. Okay, and I want to make sure that there's a difference, you understand the difference between performance measurement and value measurement. For a performance measurement, you, go, you start with the current baseline. For instance, if you um, feel like you know, the, your projects keep changing, that there's no defined scope, so you put a change in. And with performance measurement, there's always something that has to happen before you start measuring. You, know, you want to see you're measuring something. So you put a change in to say that we're going to mandate the use of scope statements. They've never had, you've never, your organization has never had them. So your current baseline might be every project, and I'm just using bogus numbers, um, goes out of scope about 20 times. And so you put this mandate in that they have to use scope statements, and you notice that um, all of a sudden the, the scope changes actually have changed, decreased to maybe 15 because there's a learning curve. And then you, you – so that's your performance change. You know, you have a 25% improvement at that stage. And then you, you measure again, you measure quarterly, and you're finding out that you can get it down with the mandate of using scope, scope statements that all of a sudden you've eliminated or nearly eliminated the um, runaway projects or the runaway the scope creep. Um, and then you try and change that. That's your value. That's the cumulative performance change, not just a one-time change, but the cumulative. And then you try and convert that into dollars if possible so that you can tell a story. For instance, you know, you might have spent a million dollars on all, you know, all these scope creep that you keep occurring in your organization. And because you've mandated this one change, you've noticed uh, you've been able to cut it down to this amount, and then you tell a story. Um, money is always a great way to do that, but it's not always available. Um, there might be situations where it's more 
um, intangible. So you might need to link your outcome with causes. And there was a situation where there was a pharmaceutical company that was in uh, California. And what they did is uh, they noticed there was being a connection being lost with their workers and their, their products. So they started to line their entry hall with pictures. Uh, they happened to be a, a product development company for, um, that was making a drug for breast uh, patients, so cancer survivors. And um, so they started putting pictures in the stories to make that connection. And the way that they were able to measure that, even though it's a feeling, was more through a, an employee satisfaction survey where they were able to measure that, that that one project, that change they made, did a, made a difference in the employee's outlook and connected them more to the work that they did with the results they were getting for the company. But I just really wanted to make sure you understood there's a difference between measuring the performance, which is singular, of a singular project versus the value, which is the cumulative. But they're they're mutually supportive disciplines. I always like to give some research um, on the subject I'm talking about, so in this case, performance measurement. Uh, at PM Solutions, we do a lot of research. And um, in 2016, we did one on um, the current data on performance measurement. And we found that um, <clears throat> this, that 40% increase in the percentage of PMOs in high-performing organizations over the PMOs in the low-performing organizations engage in project, project manager, and PMO performance monitoring and controlling. More significant was the best-in-class PMOs. 100% of them were performing crucial PPM function project portfolio management functions, um, including performance monitoring. And then 100% of them were doing PMO performance, and that they report that measuring and reporting on the PMO value was one of their top priorities. Uh, this, is an, this, to me, demonstrates the increased importance of performance measurement in business. The role of the performance measurement in organizations is actually key. As the figure above illustrates, in a healthy system, performance measurement plays a key central role. It feeds and it's fed by a lot of the process that, processes that modern organiza uh, organizations ex execute daily. If the performance measurement system is effective, it can enable real focused success in the organization. You'll see it's, the arrows go both ways for strategic planning program management, project management, performance management, quality. These are all the things that performance measurement should be touching in your organization, how well you report and monitor, how well your human resource uh, um, management is, the financial management, are you doing a good job with that? All of those, it's key in a healthy. Hi there, I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maloudis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over 1,000 hours of on-demand career development covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of The Great IT Professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.